The reason you guys are like almost eating us is that I'm so good. Oh, I got it. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. You're not a. Yeah, I could live with like a weird yeah, fire. Yeah. Or am I missing? No, like, no. <laughs> no, you the didn't kill any water I wouldn't mind, but when, when we have to drive with dad, we can This is Arcbound, my latest modding passion project and Halo 3's biggest mod ever. In my last showcase of the mod's progress, it was taking place on the outside area of Snowbound, hence the name Arcbound. And while it was quite a large space, like pretty darn big, it still wasn't enough for me. I wanted more space than you could realistically use. Enough space to place down mountains and cliff walls and make your own massive terrain structures in Forge. So, on top of adding an insane amount of new content to the mod in the form of weapons, vehicles, scenery, I've also made Arcbound almost 100 times bigger. So before I show you more, I want to quickly give a huge shout out to everyone from the playtest footage that you saw. They were all members of my Patreon and they helped me find tons of bugs and add a bunch of cool features for the release of this mod. And without their support, I wouldn't be able to make Arcbound nearly this quickly as modding Halo is literally my full-time job. So if you'd like to support what I do here and in my future endeavors, please consider supporting me on Patreon and become a part of these awesome playtests. You'll even get to mess around with these mods like Arcbound before they're even 100% ready to be released. And there's tons more playtests coming before Arcbound is released, so to all my patrons, Patrons, look forward to it. Now, let's see what's new in this massive overhaul of Arcbound. So this is everything new and modded in Arcbound. We've got giant vehicles, small vehicles, medium ones. We've got tons of scenery, including these massive ships, tons of forge blocks, and I'm gonna go over all of them and show them to you. So let's start a little small and check out what's new in the weapons department. So the old nuclear designator is still here and the nuke has been changed a little bit. I'll show you shortly. The other cool new weapon is this here, the Hunter Cannon, now a portable handheld weapon. It's super fun to shoot. It's pretty bright out here, so you can't see all the detail on the Hunter Beam, but it's here. It's awesome. And this thing has got 10 super powerful shots that can pretty much light up all kinds of things. So next up, a brand new vehicle is the Hover Hog, which I just kind of added for fun. This thing is unfinished, but it basically is, well, a Hover Warthog. It'll go bank off turns and tear stuff up. I'll show that in a future video on its own later on, but just know it's on here. Next up is the Anti-Air Shade Turret. This one is colored blue, has bigger cannons and fires these massive purple bolts. They are super strong and will actually be able to tear up vehicles like Pelicans and Phantoms pretty darn well. We've got the standalone turrets from my ODST mod. These things are great for base defense and it's pretty slick overall. You can just kind of sit there at your base, not have to worry too much about what's going on. And yeah, they work pretty darn well. Of course, I've ported over the ODST Banshee as well, which is my personal preference for placing Banshees on maps. It can hover like this, it can go pretty fast, and then it can stop once again midair. It's got a little bit of a different camera angle, which is nice as well. The uh, other ODST vehicle I'll get to a second in a second there is the Oliphant, but we have as well the Gravity Throne, now fully working as a vehicle. It can be destroyed, and above that, it actually has proper collision and stuff now. I'll be adding the Hunter Beam to it as well, which will be kind of nice, but yeah, there's that. We have the Covenant Defender again, which is pretty cool. We've also got the Troop Warthog, which lets you sit in the back with proper strings and stuff I've showed off before. And then yes, let's get to the Oliphant. This bad boy is in here, is quite speedy, can turn pretty darn quickly as well, and is a lot of fun to just drive around. This thing is fully destructible. It will explode and has a pretty cool death animation. In fact, I'll just show you right now what that looks like. All right, let's blow this bad boy up. And as you can see there, the Oliphant is donezo. It exploded right out the front. Everything's torn up. Won't be driving that anymore. I've had some suggestions to make this a nuclear bomb that you can detonate 
So maybe we'll see an alternate Oliphant variant that you can uh, kind of kamikaze into your enemies. So of course, more ODST stuff, we have the Police Pelican in this mod, which is pretty slick. It's very fun, and uh, beyond just being a pelican, it has a lot of different visual variations. And if you have any suggestions for how I could differentiate this from the regular pelicans, let me know in the comments down below, because right now it just looks super sweet and could be fun in Cops and Robbers. Now, I won't show off the other pelicans. Of course, I've flown pelicans many times on this channel, and you've seen these, as well as the Phantom. The Phantom now locks onto enemies to make it a little bit stronger, but the biggest change to a vehicle definitely has to be the long sword it is very very different it has a custom hud reticle that i designed as you can see there much like the hunter cannon had custom hud reticles the engines look very beautiful very lore friendly to halo 3 it's got cannons but its new weapon is that it can drop these missiles and as you can see it's dropping to the left there and boom Let's out a pretty big shockwave. I'll drop another one. You can see these are pretty big bombs. Honestly, I'm really happy with how the engine effects and the HUD reticles on this thing came out because they were pretty bad before. And now the longsword truly feels like its own vehicle and I'm pretty happy about that. So there you go. Brand new longsword, looking pretty slick. The Seraph still needs a lot of work. It's the one vehicle in this mod that needs work done the most. I'm pretty happy with how it looks with the effects and stuff. And it's got this pretty good weapon on it, which is sweet. But realistically, this is the one I'm focusing on the most once this video is out. Then, of course, we have the anti-air cannon, which you can never forget. This thing's got a brand new HUD reticle, so you can actually see where you're aiming. And uh, that works pretty darn well. And yeah, very loud, as usual. <laughs> Now the Scarab and the Anti-Air Scarab, uh, they do work pretty well. They are not perfect. They have some issues. Uh, <laughs> one of them is that I've been in here for so long that they've spawned inside of each other. But let me drive one of the Scarabs up and away. As you can see, the Scarab fires its beam and everything. I've been working on it to make it work in multiplayer so the sounds didn't play quite right. But yes, the Scarab is fully drivable with that custom HUD reticle. Same thing for the Scarab turret up here above. It does its thing, it fires away, and looks pretty darn good overall. Then of course the anti-air Scarab got the same treatment and is quite powerful. It drives around, looks quite good. And yeah, it's, well, it's a freaking Scarab. So let's move on past the vehicles and go into some scenery. Now, the biggest and coolest ones definitely have to be this big frigate right here, which has a full interior of collision, which is pretty awesome. You can make bases and stuff in here. On top of that, we have the destroyed frigate, which you can use as some very cool scenery. As you can see, it's basically, well, ripped into two pretty large pieces. Then we have a giant Covenant cruiser here. You can have them looming over your map. Same thing with the giant Covenant super carrier. Really, really sweet. And uh, yeah, makes for a really great scenery object. Those are going to be huge additions to Forge in my opinion. Um, but now let's take a look at the smaller scenery pieces. So for infection, I decided to add lots of flood stuff. You can see this nasty little flood ball that you can destroy, some flood tendrils. And uh, this thing here as well is a flood chunk, which you can use in various different ways to kind of rotate it around and uh, make different flood structures with it. I've done brand new teleporters in the mod. These are my own custom redesigns of the chill out teleporters, I believe. I've made them green. I've made them look a little bit different so they look more like Halo 1 teleporters. And uh, I mean, you know, they're teleporters. You go through, you come out the other side. But as you can see here, these are vehicle teleporters, which is pretty sweet. You can actually drive your warthogs in and out of these things, which is kind of crazy. Uh, they're really big and they have a really large range and yeah, they're vehicle teleporters. What more do I need to say? Very fun for custom games. We have an ODST drop pod piece of scenery. We've got these cool covenant towers, one with turrets, one without, and they are separate pieces as well. We've got crashed pelicans for you so that you can decorate your maps with those. Some crashed phantom bits and some better phantom bits coming very soon. So those are for your scenery palette, all the extra new modded stuff looks pretty good. So now for everyone who wants to build forge maps, well, have I got a palette of stuff for you. 
These here are the human or forerunner walls. They're just these big silver metallic walls that you can just place down small, medium, large, and long. Same thing with the covenant ones as well. Small, medium, large, and long bridges and stuff, platforms. You can use these as walls, roofs, floors, whatever you want. And honestly, they're really diverse and I had a decent time actually making maps with them. So for terrain, if you wanna build your own terrain, for smaller pieces, you have these cubes and long pieces. For larger pieces, you also have a cube and a long piece that are quite big. And just for scale, as you can see here, these are very, very large pieces. You can do quite a bit with them. So let's go move on a little bit. This one is even bigger. It is a massive long piece. These are seriously big pieces. And of course, for when you wanna go giga, this is the mountain piece. It is just so freaking big. It's totally useful for massive walls that you wanna surround your maps in. And yeah, now you have the option to make some seriously large builds. And then on top of that, I have another version of the mountain that's meant to be placed as flooring and ramps and stuff. This is a giant sandy floor piece that you can actually use quite well, in fact. And yeah, it's giant. It's sand, it's terrain, it's floor, it's everything you could want. So what do you do when you make a big map with these pieces, but you don't want players going outside and exploring for miles and miles on end? Well, this here is actually a giant invisible piece. Now I'm in forge mode, so it's visible, but I have it set so when you're in a custom game, this thing will only have collision for running into it. You won't be able to go through it. You will be able to shoot through it though, and uh, it'll basically just act as a physical barrier preventing people from going through it. So that's a massive, massive invisible barrier there. So now I've gone over pretty much everything that I have allowed you to place down in this new version of Arcbound. It's so, so much of them working hard on it. I have one little extra thing I wanna show you that I'm still in the progress of making and I hope I can make it work for the final version. And that is infection forms for infection. You will actually, if I can get these to work right, be able to, as infected, run around and chase people as the actual flood. And I'm really looking forward to that. Don't mind me T-posing kind of there. These are really possible to implement. It's not impossible. Some people thought it would be difficult to implement. No, you can really do it. You can be these flood things and chase around your enemies and in infection. Design your maps with all these objects here. Add some flood stuff to it and have the actual flood chase you down and infect you. It is going to be awesome. So there you go. That's everything new in Arcbound. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for me putting in a disturbing amount of effort into this mod. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.